This is the SpeedyB Master 3X. It's a 3.5 inch freestyle drone that uses a modular camera mount that can be moved from one drone to another. You just have to remove four screws, unplug the air unit, and this camera module pops right out and it can go right into a B25. But there's a lot more to this drone than just the camera mount. With this yellow and black color scheme and low profile design, this drone looks awesome and it feels super solid in my hands. It looks more like a transformer than a FPV drone. And since it's a Speedy Bee, it's set up for wireless tuning with the Speedy Bee app. It is pre-wired for GPS and it's full of smart details like a captured XT30, a USB-C extension for your flight controller, and even a cool little niche for your balance lead so it doesn't get chopped up in the props. It also flies great and it doesn't make a whole lot of noise, at least at lower RPMs. Here's what it sounds like. And here's what the hover point is on an 850 milliamp 4S battery. But, and there's always a but, isn't there? This drone isn't perfect. There are a few issues you're gonna wanna know about if you're considering the Master 3X. So let's get right into it. The aluminum head or camera module is made of aluminum plates and it's reinforced with aluminum standoffs and it is super strong. The air unit seems very well protected and ventilation is not an issue. The process of installing your DJI 04 Pro into this camera module is very straightforward. SpeedyB does have a detailed instruction manual. I'll link to it in the video notes below. The camera is soft mounted with silicone inserts and the mount does provide for plenty of camera tilt as you can see. The antennas are mounted with these molded plastic pieces which bolt right onto the aluminum plates. It uses 3D printed inserts which lock into the mounts when the antenna tube is fed through them. It's a smart design and the antennas are held in place super securely. There's no danger of them pulling out or getting caught in the props in a crash. I am a little bit worried about the durability of these plastic pieces because in a crash the antennas will act as levers and put pressure on them and they could break. I think whip antennas like these ones that the B25 uses would actually be much more durable here. And I did test fit these whip antennas but in the end I decided I wanted the better range I would get with the original DJI antennas. If you plan to fly this drone hard or if you do a lot of freestyle, I think you might want to use whip antennas. It's a trade-off between better reception or better durability, so it just depends on which you prioritize. Another thing I notice about this camera module is that the USB port is completely exposed on the bottom. Just imagine what would happen to this USB port if you landed in mud or wet grass or even just dirt. With all the engineering that's gone into this drone, I'm surprised they didn't find a way to protect the air unit on the bottom. You could probably find a 3D print or just cover it with electrical tape. Like the name implies, the Master 3X is an X-style frame, which means it's great for freestyle flying. But because the FPV camera is placed in front of the motors, I never saw props in view of my FPV footage. These arms are four millimeters thick, so you're not likely to break one. But if you did break one, it's easy to get replacements because front and back are both the same. The frame has a low profile design and it's only 21 millimeters tall. This makes for better center of gravity and in theory that'll make the drone fly better, but mostly I just think it looks cool. And it does have better aerodynamics because the battery can sit in this niche behind the air unit. This drone is full of molded plastic parts like these side plates that cover your motor wires, landing feet, and a plate underneath to protect your receiver. I tend to grab my quads like this and I like having something solid to grab onto so I'm not putting pressure directly on the electronics or solder joints. With an enclosed design like this, ventilation can be an issue, but you can tell they've thought about that because there's air intakes right here and plenty of ventilation. There is a lot going on in the rear. This might be the sexiest rear end you'll ever see on a drone. 
We do have a USB-C port with an extension to our flight controller. I really appreciate this because it makes it so much easier to connect your quad to beta flight. We also have a captured XT30 connector and a niche in the 3D print that's designed to hold your balance lead. I usually just use a rubber band wrapped around my battery to prevent my balance lead from getting caught in the props, but this is a much more elegant solution. We also have a GPS mount with a plug that's been pre-soldered to the board. Unfortunately, there is no option to get a pre-installed GPS, so you will need to supply your own GPS unit. Just make sure to get one that measures 18 by 18 millimeters to fit this print, and check the wiring diagram before you plug it in, just in case yours is pinned differently. I had a Flywoo GPS that was the right size, and it came with the right pinout, so it just plugged right in. I also had a GEP RC GPS unit I wanted to use, but it has a different pinout, so I ended up using it on a different quad. If your GPS unit has a plug, make sure and check the wiring diagram to see how it's pinned before you plug it in. The ELRS antenna is mounted underneath, and the receiver itself is tucked away and protected under this plastic plate. The receiver is wrapped in heat shrink to protect it and to lock down that UFL connector. It's connected to the all-in-one board with an extension that runs through the frame, which means it would be really easy to swap it out if you ever needed to. If you fly ELRS, you should definitely get the ELRS receiver pre-installed because it's only $10 more and the installation is very well done, so you might as well get some free labor. Our motors are SpeedyB branded and they're 1507 3600 kV motors. These are pretty beefy for 3.5 inch props, but I think it's a great fit because this isn't the lightest 3.5 inch drone out there. I'll pop it on the scale for you in just a second. Our props are the HQ 3.5 by 2.5s. 2.5 is a pretty shallow pitch, and at lower RPMs, they're quiet and efficient. Less so when you're high in the throttle. Remember, you only get one set of props with this drone, so make sure to pick up some extras. All right, you guys, I've removed the top plate to give you a close look inside the drone. The flight controller is SpeedyB's F405 all-in-one board with 40 amp ESCs. This is an 8-bit ESC running BlueJ firmware. This antenna is for your wireless connection, so you can connect to the SpeedyB app on your phone and make any tuning changes you need to in the field. We do have a cute little 220 microfarad capacitor that's soldered directly to the ESC's battery pads. That's the way it should be, but it's nice to tick that off the list because sometimes it can be hard to fit a capacitor into a small quad like this. Back here we've got a buzzer that's anchored down in its own little niche. This is a nice little extra that makes it much easier to find your quad when you crash in tall grass or bushes. Underneath the buzzer, this is an extension for the ELRS receiver that's mounted on the bottom side of the quad. Over here we have our DJI wire harness so we can just plug in our air unit. The solder work looks very good, and in general, the build quality is excellent. They've crammed a ton of features into a small amount of space here, and it kind of looks like a jigsaw puzzle to me, but fortunately, someone's put it together for me. Your battery is held in place by a single battery strap that's anchored by these two aluminum rails. It seems like a good design and it does hold the battery securely, but you're limited by the space between these rails on the sides and the space between the camera module and the TPU print in the back. SpeedyB says you can use batteries that are 31 millimeters wide and 64 millimeters long. As a reference, these batteries are a little over six centimeters long and about three centimeters wide and they fit perfectly with a little room to spare. SpeedyB says you can use up to an 1100 milliamp 4S battery. Obviously that will depend on the dimensions of the battery itself, but larger batteries like this 1300 or 1500 milliamp 4S packs will not fit. These 850 milliamp packs fit the Master 3X perfectly. I'll link to them down in the video notes. With my DJI 04 Pro, ELRS receiver and GPS unit, my drone weighs 233.9 grams, so this is not a sub 250 gram setup. With an 850 milliamp 4S battery, my drone weighs in at 335.6 grams, and I can get six and a half minutes of flight time with a mixture of cruising and light freestyle. 
If you fly hard, your flight times will be less, and if you use larger batteries or high voltage batteries, you should be able to get longer flights. I've had this drone out several times and I've had a great time flying it. It really doesn't make a lot of noise if you're just cruising, but when you punch that throttle and get those props up to higher RPMs, it does scream a little bit. The stock tune feels great to me, the drone is stable and easy to control, but it's also responsive and snappy when you want it to be. I didn't get any prop wash and I'm not seeing any vibrations, and even when I punch the throttle it feels smooth and under control. The heavy build on 3.5 inch props could actually be a good thing when it comes to how the drone flies. Lighter drones tend to feel floaty and they do get blown around in the wind a little bit more. The Master 3X feels controllable and locked in, more like a freestyle drone. I'm not going to say it flies like a 5 inch because you don't have the same top end speed like you do on a 5 inch, but if you're coming from a B25, the Master 3X will feel like a freestyle beast. The props only have a two and a half inch pitch, which is a little bit lower than what I'm used to because I fly at high elevations and I prefer higher pitch props, but the combination with these 1507, 3600 kV motors feels great. It can rip when you hammer the throttle, but it's also quiet and efficient if you take it easy or go for a cinematic style. This is a great go anywhere drone and it would be perfect to take with you on a trip. I could see pairing this with a B25 to do travel videos or real estate videos because you could use the Master 3X to get your wide shots or your cinematic scenery shots and then you could pop that DJI 04 Pro into your B25 for those tighter indoor shots, fly throughs or when you need to fly around people. With a setup like that, your shots would blend together perfectly in post since it's literally the same camera. You wouldn't have to worry about your shots having different frame rates, shutter speed, exposure settings, ND filters, or whatever. The real strength of this drone is its versatility. You can do a lot with this 3.5 inch form factor, especially if you pair it with a B25. All right, you guys, now it's time for my conclusions. And I have to say that the Master 3X is one of the most exciting drones I've seen in a while and the ability to use one DJI 04 Pro across multiple drones is huge for me because I end up moving my DJI 04 Pros from one drone to another anyway, and it can be a real pain. And if you already have a B25, or if you're in the market for a three and a half inch freestyle drone or in a two and a half inch CineWhoop, the ability to share a single air unit between the Master 3X and the B25 is going to be very appealing. But like I mentioned in the introduction, this drone is not perfect and there are a few minor issues with the Master 3X that you need to be aware of. First of all, this drone is relatively heavy. All those molded plastic parts and the extra material required for that modular camera mount do add up. I hate to complain about all these cool features, but there is a trade-off here and all that over-engineering results in a drone that's heavier than it needs to be. I'm also a little bit worried about the durability of these antenna mounts, but so far they've held up fine and you could use whip antennas if you need yours to be crash-proof. It would have been nice if SpeedyB had included some whip antennas in the box to give us that option like they did with the B25. I do wish there were an option to have GPS pre-installed instead of making us source our own GPS unit. It is super easy to install a GPS as long as you get the right one. So make sure you get one that's 18 by 18 millimeters to fit this mount, and if possible, get one with the same pinout. Also, the USB port on the DJI 04 Pro Air unit is totally exposed on the bottom. It would have been nice to include some sort of cover, or at least some rubber plugs to protect it from dirt and grass. And remember, you only get one set of props with this drone, so don't forget to pick up some more. I would have liked to have seen two sets instead of just one. Also remember that the space for your battery is limited, so if you have some 4S batteries you want to use, just make sure your batteries are less than 3.5 centimeters wide and 7 centimeters long. Fortunately, all of these issues are very minor and there are no deal breakers here. For me, the advantages of this design totally outweigh these small disadvantages, and I think SpeedyB has a real winner here. Not just with this drone, but with the combination of the Master 3X and the B25, because you get the full benefit of this design when you own both drones. 
I really hope they integrate this camera module into the B35 and maybe even adapt a 5 inch drone to use it also. Because if they had a full line of drones that used this modular camera mount instead of just these two, a lot of pilots would buy into it, myself included. What do you guys think about this drone? Are you considering a Master 3X? Are you going to upgrade your B25? If you want to learn more about these or check pricing, I do have links in the video notes. Thanks for your time, and I'll see you in the next one.